if you are an oxygen user then there's good news around the corner in this video i want to bring you a sneak peek of what is coming to oxygen builder via recorder workspace recorder workspace is arguably the most advanced add-on for oxygen builder it is a plugin that adds some advanced and impressive functionality to the oxygen builder some even say that it is what gives oxygen that webflow like experience so if you think recorder workspace has been awesome all this while well you're in for a treat because what i'm going to show you is going to blow you away so what you're going to see is something that is currently under development it's not it's not out yet it's in active development so uh, you're going to see uh, uh, some of the features of recorder workspace 2.0 what is coming okay it's still in the works so everything is not perfect but i want to give you a sneak peek of what you are to expect what is coming and get you excited and ready for it so basically the upcoming release version 2.0 is going to take what we already have to the next level so the question is can we achieve a webflow effect a webflow like user experience inside oxygen builder so let's take a look You've already seen the interface of the builder right here. So I'm just going to pull up the structure panel. Now there is nothing much here. As you can see, this is um, everywhere is clean here. Now, like I said, this is only version 2.0 features. The features for what you've already known, you know, the features of Recorder 1.7, you know, up till the recent update, is not in this build yet. You know, it's not been ported here. So these are uh, features that are just uh, peculiar to 2.0 and like i said it's in active development the first thing that is coming in 2.0 is the box model now take a look at this i believe you already spotted that this is what we call the box model now the box model is designed to always be there whether you are in a normal view or you are in the full screen view the box model is always there now you could always turn it off but it's designed to be there okay so if i want to turn it off i can quickly go here and then turn it off so if you don't want it to always be there you can just turn it off. but by default it's there and i like it i like the fact that the box model is there so what it does is like it gives you the ability to edit the the spacings the border and the the size of the elements now it's kind of similar to what when you have a uh, the browser inspection where you have the box model here okay so it's kind of similar uh, uh but the thing is that you can make changes to elements so i'm, I'm selecting this div right now uh, let's say i want to let me just go full screen at once and then i want to uh, change the margin or the padding so let me click on the padding now what it does is gives you a preset of the commonly used values so you have the 8 pixel value the 16 pixel value but the good thing is it doesn't impute these values as pixel but it, it shows you in pixel because pixels is what you are familiar with so let's say i want to give this a 32 pixel padding all around so i'm going to just click 32 and then i'm going to go here and click and it applies all around so you can see that uh, i click 32 but what you see here is two that means it's two rem now if we go into the settings you can see that it gives it a two rem padding all around now uh, another thing is that you really i don't think you can actually type something in here you you could just select what you want uh, where you want to style and then it gives you the option now i don't know if that is by design or if it is a bug okay like i said it's an active development now uh, so you see the 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 size so you can see that if you click there it takes you to the size so if i want to have the minimum width for this i could just go there and give it a minimum width of 500 and of course i mean you want to do that if you have set up your grid and all uh, but I'm just giving you an idea of you know the fact that you can give it a minimum width so what i'm going to do is this i'm just going to drop a section all right so i have a section i'm going to drop a div in that section and then i'm going to click that uh, let's go full and then i'm going to give it a minimum width of 600 pixels you can see that i have that minimum width and i can give it a minimum height of 500. Uh, right there you can have it now this box model all the settings within the box model it makes it accessible you know just one click accessible to you other than that you would want to go in here and then do all the settings but it's always right here within reach if you are here again and you want to go to the border so i can just click here and go to the border i can set the border radius maybe 25 yeah if i click that it brings you know you could always uh, set the different side let's say i want this to be zero okay um but let's let's do that again so i did 25 right yeah so 25 it, it just by default i think by default it, it, it does all round okay let's do 50 yeah it does all round but if you want to um to limit it to a certain side you could go here and do individual uh styling 
okay so that's that's really cool i love that and if you want to add style um you want to add a border to it you can always do that you have your color now this just i'm just introducing another option not it wasn't planned right but this is another uh, option okay it has this awesome looking color wheel so i can just go here and choose the color that i want my border to be so i can choose different style for the border i can choose the width maybe i want a 10 pixel border here i have that and my color all right and also uh if i i can choose the side here i want this side to be let's say maybe 10 pixel sorry i already have 10 2 there and i want this side to be 2 okay so you could um you know you could do all that here but if you want every way it's here okay at the center uh, by default it you know get the gist right <laughs> okay anyway so this is great now you have the size you have the border and you have the spacing uh, let's say i want to space the the top margin so i can go ahead and just give 16 pixel or 120 pixel uh margin but then if you go into there you see it gives you 7.5 rem of margin so this is really cool i this is awesome it's it's gonna make workflow very easy very straightforward now the next thing I want to show you is the custom CSS now normally when you are working and you want to do custom CSS let's say for this I want to go in here and say uh, uh, background okay background uh, say that is gonna be red okay so I have my background red I'll go in here now not to think of the fact that this always expand and then you have to uh, you know do that every time now you have an option if you click here you could toggle the custom css panel that is always there now even if you go full screen that custom css panel is still there so you have that i can just say um what can i <laughs> what can i do here uh, i can just say box shadow okay so these border settings i don't think it has a box shadow uh, settings here i mean which is okay so i could just say um maybe box shadow uh, zero or let's say five pixel five uh five pixel uh black okay so i can have that then i can have a blur of let's say 20 pixel all right all right so it gives me my box shadow now this is this is per individual custom css so uh per, did i say per individual per, per element okay now uh if i select this i can always apply my another custom css to that but then uh remember that it it works with the classes and the ids and if you take a look at this you can see that this is an updated a cleaner design than what we already had uh previously we had this you know much bigger and much more uh obtrusive design i mean it wasn't bad you know but i kind of like this one so when you select the id now previously was there an id yeah there was an id yeah but i kind of like the way this does now this is a, a locked class now so i'm going to select this class and then i can go to the custom css and just write background uh let's say yellow and you can see that it applies to all that class so if i select this the custom css is always there so this is a very neat very neat feature now i don't want yellow okay i want something bright a, a couple of times you want to write your css and you really don't know what color you want to choose now uh, apart from the fact that you may have your color set up right but if i just do that and then there's a pencil icon here now let's go full screen so uh every other thing will be out of the way now this pencil icon can enable me to insert you know something there sorry something was wrong there let me just do that again okay so this pencil icon enables me to insert a color you know just right there right inside the custom css all right all right so i'm gonna just do my light blue there and then i have that so it's really really neat i like it i like it a lot so this is something that is going to make your workflow much quicker and it cut off a couple of steps that you will have to take to get things done then another thing uh, i wanted you to notice if you may have observed is that this it's just different there are new icons they are more streamlined you know I, I love the way they look now they look really good really the 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 overall now the the philosophy of the version 2.0 the philosophy of recorder 2.0 is to uh make the interface more congruent with the native oxygen interface everything is in harmony it doesn't stand out the first the, the previous versions up till now uh if you take a look at the previous version a couple of these things all these things would have stood you know they stood out you know uh from the oxygen interface they just feel alien they feel like an add-on okay if they feel like it is an external plugin but this is designed to have the same feel as the 
whole oxygen user interface so you can barely notice that it is an add-on it just feels native and i don't know if the oxygen developers you know are watching this i would really encourage you to encourage the third-party developers by giving them apis that is going to enable them to do something you know to make their work easier to really integrate the ideas they have in oxygen so that i believe there's a lot of work you know a lot of work that goes into doing stuff like this especially when they don't have that developer you know api to plug into i don't know what is going on but i really said it would be a great idea to really you know give them the support that they need to build add-ons because the lifeblood of a builder is in the ecosystem the ecosystem no matter what you want to do the ecosystem is very powerful thing you know it I mean, unless you're ready to do the work, but then if you don't have the features and people love the features that the third party developers are bringing, then give them the support they need to do it. And if for any reason you want to add that to the native, fine, add it and they will take it off from theirs. As simple as that, you know, now let's move ahead to the other, you know, other features. There's a couple of other features right here. I haven't shown you yet. Now, uh, take a look at these now custom attributes. Um, I like the way they did it. Now, I know they could have just, you know, just switch it the same way they're switching the others, um, like this, you know, but then they could switch it like this shows. I kind of like how they just blow everything out and then you can just add the attributes. You could just add them, okay? And then when you come out, I mean, clicking is supposed to go out, but let's say you click outside, okay? I said it's in development, right? So expect to see some, you know, quirks here and there. All right, so I really like what they did here. Um, so it's cool it's kind of cool you have that popping out of this this other part blurs out okay nice and then one other thing i would like to show you is this um this color you see you have two here now i'm going to select this background okay we already gave it a background uh but i'm going to select it and then i'm going to just choose see if i can choose another background for it so i can't choose another background for it because i already have a background uh now but if i go to the foreground you see the foreground you can you know style the text now the foreground the background it's it's foreground means the text the background means the background okay but right here i can't style the background even though it's giving me a background color here that is because i already have something in the custom css so let's take that away so if we go to the background you see uh of course the custom css override that one in the settings so that is the order of priority but if you didn't have anything there and you want to style this you can see you could still style this based on this and then you have your foreground color now normally not as though this is how your workflow is going to be all right i wouldn't recommend working like this of course you your text and everything should have you know been set up properly in terms of the colors the size but this is just there maybe for a quick you know preview it you just want to quickly see how it's going to look like um having a this kind of text on this type of background is a really nice tool to see so it uh, you know it just works with the class system you can see everything is changing and now if i go to that text you can see that that text doesn't have any color now let's go back to the background let's go to the text uh field of that uh, the text settings the typography setting of the background you can see that that foreground color is inserted here and that is really um really brilliant it works together with the, the system i mean the settings now uh but if i select the text i can always style the text also by using the foreground color to style it you can see now when i style the text i want you to take note of these numbers here showing right here i'm going to zoom into that okay now take a look it has the contrast ratio checker right inside oxygen builder this is awesome it has a contrast ratio checker so it checks the contrast ratio and shows you whether it is good enough you can see the x there and then you have the one tick and then if it's good enough you have the two ticks and and the, the number the the you know you have those scores and these are really really good so if you ever do any design okay you have a text color now if i go back uh, to this text um, you can see that that color is there so if i have now you really you don't even have to use this tool if you set a color you can see take a look at it you can see that it's changing it's it's automatically checking uh the contrast uh so if you have a, a poor contrast a color that is contrasting poorly with the background now if i take it white you can see that this is showing x completely which leads me to this 
this and this now there is a way now if you let's go back here if you have these settings you know you could just clear them by clicking that okay so i have 500 there there's a small dot here kind of like what you have in bricks i think <laughs> uh, so you could always clear them out um, just by clicking that i would like that if recorder just incorporate that into every way in oxygen just maybe some way here you know maybe some way here if you could just click a dot here click a dot here to clear it but they have something here okay so you could reset the styling so i have all this styling here on this so if i go out here and point on this you can see that reset and you could just reset every style there now i don't want to reset that so let me do it now the next thing i'm going to show you is the filter okay so i'm going to click on the filter now this this is like it's called element manager uh, it's not called a filter but i i think I, i'll call it a filter because what it does is that it enables you to filter element off well it manages okay it manages the elements and then you can filter them now if i click this you can see that i have it shows me just the images so you can filter by code block now i don't have any code block here so i'm just going to quickly drop a code block here i'm going to block drop a code block one i'm just going to say uh code one and then I'm going to duplicate that and say code 2. All right. Okay. So now I have my code block. And then if I, now I'm, I'm on the page. Okay. I'm just on the page. And I want to, you have a very, uh, if you have a lot of things on, on the, on the, your side, you have a lot of nested, you know, stuff, so many things. You don't want to go in and start looking for where each of the code blocks were. You could just, uh, you could just filter it by code block. You can see. Right now it's filters you could you could just and it's going to select it right there you could go there and do your work whatever you want to do and if you have another code here you know i mean i mean if you have maybe this was somewhere hidden let's bring this one down into this place so um maybe that was hidden so you could just select this or or this or you could select the image so this selects this you can see that selects that image this one selects this image so you could select them and start working right away you could just select this and just go to this uh part and start working go custom css finish working you know come out uh, it's really cool i'm using the tab you know to go full screen and out okay uh this shows all the buttons so it can, it can show all the button i can select the buttons from here so while you're working you know and you want to select a button you could just go here or you want to select an element you could just filter there and the headings this shows all the headings the next thing to show is this you could toggle x-ray mode that was in the previous but then it's done in a different way now another thing is uh, of course these are all features that are redone in a separate way okay you could you know common screen sizes you could just view your website in maybe you want to view how it looks on a retina how it looks on a 1920 and like that and uh, you could also toggle the grid guides now the great thing about this is in this version in version 2 you can actually edit there is settings for the grid in the previous version there was no setting so if you go here uh this is um this is you know you see this icon you click there you can go to the grid guide and you could set whatever you want to set the maximum width of the grids at the different breakpoints the columns at this breakpoint 12 column do you want a 10 column grid you see it's automatically adjust a 12 column grid how much gutter do you want is it 10 you see it's adjusting but the default settings are usually recommended except you know exactly what you're doing so this grid guide enables you to lay out your page and it shows you whether um you are doing the right thing you know whether you are you know aligning your stuff properly it can it can help you to just pick up uh, a misalignment or if you're building a pixel perfect website uh, it's going to help you do that so let's let's toggle it off okay now let's go back to that settings you have different ui settings you can turn off this stuff uh which uh at this icon the icons here you can turn off which one you don't want okay you could turn off uh, the top bar features editing now it's now showing you the the page i didn't mention this you may have noticed it is now showing you the page that you are currently editing so uh this is a very neat feature sometimes you you have to look at the address bar to see what page but it's showing you here so it's do you want to show you know i like that uh, canvas help us you could turn off some of the features a detail tweak a class switcher uh, you could turn uh you could uh, change the editor font size the code editor now you have the ability to set the default heading tag you know if you want uh in oxygen if you put a heading let's say we, i'm dropping a heading into this 
uh, the default tag is usually h1 but a lot of people don't like that okay uh, a lot of people feel that the defaults uh the default should be h2 because you you typically use h2 more often than the h1 so anytime you drop it uh, on the page you don't want to always go back to change it so i'm just gonna uh, i'm just gonna delete that and then i'm gonna go in there and set my default to h2 okay now when i drop in a, a heading uh you're gonna drop in a heading you can see that that heading automatically is h2 because i've set the default settings okay so uh, a lot of things here just take a look at them default paragraph tag uh, tag is you want to be to, it to be p or you want it to be uh i think the default when we drop in a text is usually a div something like that so let's see what that does i'm going to just put a text here oh let's look at this now this is uh this is a regular text so i'm just going to go to the front end I, I i haven't saved this but i already had that so um what if i check this okay what if i check this let me just uh let put let me put this properly now what if i check this the paragraph see uh, when i drop a text it's like it's a d okay uh, but i think if you want a paragraph what you do is you drop in the rich text so the rich text is i think it's usually the paragraph tag so that is what you have in oxygen so i'm going to refresh this and let's see the difference so you have these this is div and even the rich text is 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 not even a paragraph it's a div uh let's see if that will change let's do this and i'm going to change it to p and i'm going to save this let's see if it's going to change or we need to add something else uh, i'm going to refresh that and do that so it's still that it's still div but let's add another one so i'm just going to add one here okay by the way let me just quickly give this um padding okay just do that now this is if you want to do the opposite side but this is all sides okay um let's go check the foreground to white all right okay so i want to add a text a normal text there let me uh check it out and see if it is gonna i i I've, i don't know what that does that paragraph tag uh, uh tag but let's see if it's gonna work oh beautiful beautiful you see that so you you no longer need to have your you know your text here as divs 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 so let's go back here so what i want to do is i'm going to delete this and then i'm going to uh, add a new one okay i'm just going to add just the basic text as before of course i'm going to copy this and put here save it now these are the ones i added before i you know i toggle that settings this is the new one and let's see what it's going to do so that so yeah we have a p tag here so instead of a, having a div as in this case which is not good you know we have a p tag now another feature i want to show you is the uh, custom javascript panel now this custom javascript panel is uh on per element okay uh, let's say if i add uh let's say um maybe as a console console.log okay uh hello okay now uh if i go to another now this is on the text all right this text if i go to this heading and open here you see you can't see that but if you go back to the text you know and open it you can see it so it's on per element level sort of like um uh just here you see it's right there so it's just a quick way of opening the the you know javascript panel for an element uh so if um if you have that so you don't have to now it just saves you going all the way here and coming all the way here okay uh and then you know this fills up your whole screen uh but if you don't want to do that you can use this instead okay so uh you could use this and see how it blows out the the you know the settings here i like it and then you could just uh use that to use that to write your you know you know write whatever you want to write okay that's javascript for you <laughs> this is good these and the custom css they just bring out those panels for you and makes it easy now there is something else here i i think this probably has to do with what i don't know i'm not quite sure uh we have custom css i don't know what this does maybe it's a feature that is still in development and this is a keyboard shortcut it shows you the default keyboard shortcuts it shows you default single key for the workspace and the code editor uh nothing is here for now i don't know why but maybe it's a glitch i thought i saw something there when i was playing with this but then i mean these are shortcuts they just show you the simple sh the common shortcuts for whatever you want to do here
I think that's basically all. If I have not missed anything, I mean, don't worry if I've missed anything. I mean, 2.0, when it releases, you're going to see uh, everything you wanted to see, okay? You're going to see that. Um, what is Hello World doing? All right, my code block. Okay, so you're going to see everything. So this is uh, Recorder 2.0 sneak peek, okay? Currently in development. If you don't have your copy of Recorder, uh, this is the website, uh, you know, workspace, uh, recorder.me slash workspace. Uh, currently, they now have just one license, and it's a lifetime license of one ninety nine dollars. So you can use it on a thousand website. There was an information that you know the price was gonna go up once two point zero is released. I don't know the timeline. I don't know how long it's gonna take for two point zero to to come out. So if you wanna get recorder, uh, now might be the time for you to get recorder. And if you're planning to get recorder, you could just go to this uh, to this link or. Uh, you could do me a favor and use my uh, affiliate link so it's your own way of supporting the channel at no extra cost to you so if you appreciate the videos i've been doing and you want to support the channel you could use my affiliate link to get recorder workspace i'm going to link it in the description and you check the first comment you're going to see that link there so use it and get recorder workspace thank you very much so that is all for the sneak peek so is it possible for recorder to achieve the webflow effect in oxygen builder with the direction they are going do you think they can pull it off so let me know in the comment section and let me know what you think uh, I, i'm not quite sure if i missed anything here but if i did uh, don't worry when 2.0 comes out i'm going to do a full comprehensive review on 2.0 until then have a great time bye